we are going to find the equation of tangent lines to these trig functions. So we're going to use our trig derivatives and we're going to use the unit circle on this. First step is going to be find the derivative of f. Anytime you see tangent line, you think derivative, right? So f prime of x is going to be 2 is just chilling. And then the derivative of cosine is negative sine. So I'm going to say negative 2 sine x is my derivative. And then remember the derivative represents the slope of the tangent line, which changes a lot as we move along the curve. We want to know what it is at pi over 2. So I'm going to plug it in. f prime of pi over 2 equals negative 2 sine pi over 2. And well, we just ran into sine of pi over 2, right? So sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this becomes negative 2 times 1. Okay. So that was my derivative. That's f prime. That's also the slope of my tangent line. Right. Now I need to plug it in. And remember to plug it in, I need a point. I already know I have an x. I need to figure out the y, right? So my point is always going to be x comma f of x, meaning my point is going to be pi over 2 comma whatever I get when I plug pi over 2 into cosine. Well, for my unit circle, cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Okay, so 2 times 0 is 0. So pi over 2 zero is my point. Okay. Here is a great time in our lives to use what is called point slope form. So point slope form it, for a linear equation is y minus y1 equals m times x minus x1. So it's a way of writing down a linear equation in terms of a point, so x1, y1, and a slope. Right. So it saves us from having to solve for b. Um, it's a perfectly fine way to write down uh, a line, especially on the AP Calc exam, where you want to save as much time as possible. So I'm going to use that here, and we'll see in our next problem that it really saves us a lot of headache. So in this case, my final equation, I could write it as y minus 0 equals negative 2, so that's my slope, times x minus pi over 2. Okay. So in this case, solving for b wouldn't actually be that hard, but this is obviously easier. So I just wrote it down like that, and you can get rid of the 0 if you wanted, and I could obviously like distribute, but this is a fine way to write down a line. Super convenient for writing down tangent lines. Okay. So there's our first example. Our next one's a little bit scarier, okay? So make sure you understand this one before you move on. And here we go. So same thing as before, we want the equation of a tangent line at x equals pi over 9. And then what we will do is take the derivative, so f prime of x. So the derivative of cosecant is negative cosecant cotangent. So I'll say negative. I'll like bring that down. And then I'll write another negative because that's part of my derivative rule. Cosecant 3x, cotangent 3x, and then I still have to do chain rule, right? Because that's a function inside there. Times 3. Okay, so already you see my derivative is a little bit uglier. I should simplify that a little bit, right? So negative negative becomes a positive and I'll bring that 3 out front because it looks nicer cosecant 3x cotangent 3x okay so that's my derivative so that's f prime of x and then I want to plug in my x so I want to take f prime of instead of x now I'll say f prime of pi over 9 So 3 times cosecant, 3 times pi over 9 would be pi over 3. So I'm going to do that little bit of simplifying right now. And then cotangent, 3 times pi over 9, again, is pi over 3. And then what I like to do for these reciprocal 
trig functions, so cosecant, cotangent, is I like to rewrite them. So cosecant is 1 over sine. So my 3 I'll keep out front, and I'll say this is 1 over sine pi over 3 times cotangent 1 over tangent pi over 3. Okay, and then what we will do now is go to our unit circle. We'll find sine pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. And then tangent pi over 3. Well, tangent is sine over cosine. In this case, it just ends up being root 3. And then I'll simplify this some. So 3 will rewrite. We're going to flip this fraction because it's 1 over a fraction, right? 2 over square root 3. And then this is already just sort of a fraction by itself. So I'm going to leave that alone. And then I'm going to multiply straight across. So I'll do 3 times 2 times 1 is 3 on top. Just kidding. 3 times 2 is 6 on top, right? And then root 3 times root 3 on the bottom is just 3, right? So 6 over 3 is 2. So that's my slope. So I could say the slope of my tangent line is 2. And now I need a point to go with my slope, right? So I'll use pi over 9. My point is going to be pi over 9 comma f of pi over 9. So I need to plug it back in to get my y, right? And that will be pi over 9 comma negative cosecant 3 times pi over 9. Okay, and really what that is, right, is negative 1 over sine of pi over 3. And then from my unit circle, pi over 3 is, the sine of pi over 3 is root 3 over 2. So this ends up being pi over 9 times negative 2 over square root 3. Okay. And then I'm going to use point slope form again. So see, like this, this is my point. See how point slope form is going to save me a whole bunch of headache here. So I'm going to say y minus negative 2 square root 3 equals 2 times x minus pi over 9. Okay. So that is that. Again, this one's quite a bit spicier than the last one. Um, it's what we've always done using derivatives to find equations of tangent lines. So, so find the derivative, plug in your point. And then plug in the slope you get and the a point from the original function into a linear equation, and you're good to go.